guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I really wanted to talk about the possible TikTok ban that is being discussed this week by Congress and kind of go through all of the discourse that I've seen on this issue and how it may affect the internet as we know it. As you may know, rumors of TikTok, which is basically the biggest social media platform right now being banned, started a couple of years ago and seemingly kind of went nowhere until this month. TikTok started out as a cringy, musically lip-syncing app for preteens and teenagers, but I think it's safe to say that it has seriously evolved from that point. And nowadays, there are about 150 million active users in the US alone. That means that just a little under half of Americans are on TikTok. Another thing to consider, while social media has of course been around forever at this point, TikTok was kind of revolutionary in its own right and really fast-tracked quick short-form video content which has sort of led other social media platforms to follow suit. Also interestingly, TikTok videos don't just stay on TikTok anymore and are often funneled down onto other platforms like Instagram and Facebook which really means that that 150 million users can be considered just the start of the viewers of the shared content. So what's the big deal if TikTok does get banned? Let's break that down a little bit because it actually is a bigger deal than we might think initially. According to an article on NPR, a quote small but growing number of US adults are now using TikTok as their main news resource. There are a plethora of reasons for that in my opinion, but the main one is that oftentimes the information you're getting on TikTok is unbiased in a sense where most creators are not owned by a company. News channels that are on regular TV, every single one of them is owned by an entertainment company. What's more, it's been discussed that literally on TikTok before about how these news outlets will only deliver news from a biased standpoint and sometimes words or subject matters are completely banned from being discussed. So while this may sound laughable, TikTok is a more reliable source of information these days and usually it's quick form short contents that you can listen to or watch fast throughout the day. And again, while mainstream news outlets and channels have advertisements and a lot of fluff that Gen Z, millennial, and now older generations no longer have time or attention span for. Okay, but before I go off on a tangent about the pros of keeping TikTok, what are some of the cons? What is the angle the government is using to even attempt a discussion of a ban? According to an article on the New York Times, it's all about security threats because of data sharing. Also, according to this article on February 27th, the White House told federal agencies that they had 30 days to delete the app from government devices. It seems as well that Canada, New Zealand, and Britain issued similar instructions. Now I did try to look this up but I'm not exactly sure what is considered a government device. I'm guessing that official computers etc go without saying but does this also include the personal phones of staff members like the CIA guys or what does that include? If any of you happen to know please comment down below. I think that is just an interesting question because if it's just work and computers and stuff why would TikTok even be on there? Since since the demand of the removal of TikTok apps on those devices, it then led to a vote to advance legislation that would call for a nationwide ban for TikTok from President Biden. But anyway, back to the why. The concern is that TikTok could place sensitive user information like location, etc. onto the hands of the Chinese government. Another concern apparently is that China may be able to use TikTok's content recommendation for misinformation. Now, keep in mind, other social media platforms like Twitter, etc are controlled by the government and a lot of stuff is censored or shadow banned if it doesn't fall under a certain opinion. I came across this TikTok that explains just why that fear of TikTok is kind of stupid. TikTok didn't start collecting any kind of data that it wasn't already collecting before. It's also not collecting data that a million other companies don't harvest and sell in nice, tight, neat little packages to all kinds of people around the world. This guy also explains that if China was going to get user data information, it would be easier just to buy it because it's fully out there for sale. Which are freely available. I don't think that China went out of its way to create an app in order to track and monitor stuff that's widely available on the market already. It would have been a lot more cost effective for them to just go buy it. That user also explains that this is just a bipartisan bill. But what they did do 
was give Americans the ability to communicate with each other. That is a huge threat, not to the individuals who are communicating their ideas to one another, but to the administration in power. And that's why this is a bipartisan bill. Both parties in power agree that it's dangerous for the American people to communicate their ideas to one another. Another thing that should be mentioned is that should this bill be passed, it will open the doors for other apps that are not American owned, as this TikTok user explains here. Congress will likely pass a bill called the Restrict Act. That bill would specifically give the Department of Commerce more power to take action against technology companies that are based in certain countries the United States considers foreign adversaries. Number one on that list, China. If this bill is passed, the Commerce Department would have more power to investigate foreign companies and deem whether their services pose a national security threat. It's CapCut, by the way. She does say that at the end eventually, but CapCut itself became pretty popular. Not as big as TikTok, of course, but as this user mentions, CapCut actually got more US downloads recently these past weeks. But I think that could be explained more because most people already have TikTok downloaded. So obviously download numbers can only increase so far. And what's more, a lot of TikTok trends have actually required certain templates that are on CapCut. So really, I think if there was no TikTok, then CapCut would really not be as popular anyway. Okay, so to kind of wrap up the why and the fear behind passing this ban on TikTok, TikTok is actually owned by a company called ByteDance. To make a somewhat long story somewhat short, ByteDance came out and admitted that their staff had in fact, quote, employees inappropriately obtained data from American users. So I guess literally the worst fear for the American government by the sounds of it. TikTok has been back and forth and sworn up and down that they are not an agent of China and have apparently even made moves to attempt to separate themselves from the parent company. Interestingly as well, India has banned TikTok and this was a big deal when it happened as it obviously lost TikTok a bunch of money and possible other opportunities. I wonder as well, where will content creators go if this ban goes forward? Look at the influx of creators we've seen just in the past three years that have made their fortunes and literally sculpted their lives off the back of using this app. Of course, creators like the D'Amelio sisters and Bella Poach, etc. are probably just fine with their TikTok accounts these days, but what are smaller creators who are just catching that wave of attention and sponsorships? Do you guys think that a different app will take over? Do you think that Brittany Browski would be interested in working with the hot tea team? But in the days leading up to the congressional hearing, the TikTok CEO himself posted a TikTok saying this. Half of the US coming to TikTok to connect to create, to share, to learn, or just to have some fun. This includes 5 million businesses that use TikTok to reach their customers. And the majority of these are small and medium businesses. Now, these numbers are amazing. And I'm so thankful to all of you and the 7,000 TikTok employees in the US. If TikTok gets banned in the US, does this mean 7,000 people will be out of jobs? Some politicians have started talking about banning TikTok. Now, this could take TikTok away from all 150 million of you. I'll be testifying before Congress later this week. Let me know in the comments what you want your elected representatives to know about what you love about TikTok. It literally doesn't feel like real life that we're hearing a CEO of this huge company who's literally about to go plead his case to Congress literally say comment what you want me to say. I am dying. But anyway, let's talk about what has happened so far with the congressional hearing. I want to note here that I am making this video the little day that the hearing is happening. So whether more information comes out before I upload, just keep that in mind and I'll do my best to deliver an update when that's needed as well. So let's look at this congresswoman pressing the TikTok CEO on the main beef, the privacy concern. We had nothing to hide. Would you need to downplay the association with ByteDance in China? And you expect us to believe that you are capable of maintaining the data security, privacy and security of 150 million Americans? You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it is an extension of the CCP. And just as an FYI, the CCP is the Chinese Communist Party. But just before she says all of that, this same congresswoman presents the TikTok CEO with a video that was posted on the platform. The video in question, which I can't show here on YouTube, basically shows a handgun video graphic being fired until the clip is empty. Here's what the congresswoman had to say about that. More concerning is the fact that it named this chairwoman, your own community guidelines state you have a firm stance against enabling violence on or off TikTok. This video has been up for 41 days. It is a direct threat to the chairwoman of this committee. She questions how the CEO claims to be able to protect the data of 150 million American users while he cannot protect even just the people in the room. And I really just have to say real quick that, okay, yes, that video is aggressive. I'm not excusing it in any way, but can the government maybe even have a meeting about the pedophiles that are rampant on Instagram? 
One thing that does have me on the side of TikTok is that there is a large community dedicated to exposing and stopping adults who are attempting to groom and abuse children. Committees and boards have been real quiet about that one, and if you've seen any of this talked about on TikTok, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if we are really concerned with safety, okay, let's be concerned about safety then. Also, to note, at the end of the fairly brutal line of questioning from that congresswoman, the CEO says, may I respond to which he's met with the answer, we're going to move on from whoever was in charge there. But apparently this is a regular thing for congressional hearings. There is apparently a lot of talking over the top of each other and the witness or the person being questioned doesn't really get to speak all that much. Like see all these people, they all have something to say and they're given about five minutes to do so. So of course they don't want to share their five minutes, do they? One point kind of against TikTok that I can sort of almost side with is the effect that the app can have on mental health and the bizarre trends that blow up there. A Florida chair member is up to speak and mentions that the TikTok algorithm tends to push self-harm and suicide trends to children. He mentions that just recently an investigation was opened in Italy after a trend called the French Scar Challenge went viral and from what I've read this challenge is leaving a mark or bruise or something on the face. This member also mentions the blackout challenge or the choking challenge which has resulted in the tragic deaths of nine children. In addition to the bizarre and dangerous challenges this Florida member brings to light a teenager who took his life allegedly because of what he was watching on TikTok. Your company destroyed their lives. The content in Chase's For You page was not a window to discovery, as you boldly claimed in your testimony. He continues by presenting that the content on TikTok is not good and is actually causing irreparable damage. It is unacceptable, sir, that even after knowing all these dangers, you still claim TikTok is something grand to behold. He then shows what was the boys for you page and it is video after video of glamorized talk about suicide. And one thing I have to insert here, one of these videos was actually a clip from a show on Netflix. So again, while what this man is saying isn't necessarily wrong, I also don't think that it's fair to put it all on the TikTok app. If we are going to really talk about the issue here, we should be talking about mental health as a whole. And if we are going to be policing apps and programs that our children watch, which we should be anyway, shouldn't this include everything from what's on their phone to what's on the TV at home? Do you guys think that that this warrants the ban of an app from the entire country? Your algorithms used by TikTok to prioritize content to its users. Yes or no, please? Uh, Congressman, I'll, I'll just like to, if respectfully, if you don't mind, I'll just like to start by saying it's devastating to hear about the news of, yes, as a yes. father myself, this is Sir, tragic. yes or no? This part is quite infuriating because he literally will not let him finish or get a word in. I'll repeat the question. Do you have full responsibility over the algorithms used by TikTok to prioritize content to its users. Yes or no, please. Uh, Congressman, we, we do take these issues very seriously. Yeah, yeah, yes or no. Wow. And we do provide resources for anyone who types in anything that... Sir, is yes or related. no. I see you're not willing to answer the question. Oh my God. Or take any responsibility for your parents' companies, the technology and the harms it creates. It's just very, very sad. Very sad. It's very sad. This I is why Congress needs to enact a comprehensive privacy and data security law. Even if you believe this man has a strong point, I cannot stand him, I'm sorry. It's the mumbling and flipping pages to the yelling yes or no for me. Over the algorithms used by TikTok to prioritize content to its users, yes or no, please. Mr. Florida wraps his five minutes up by saying, it's the children, we must protect our children. And just to reiterate the prior point I made, Mr. Florida, please keep that same energy when we're talking about all social media. And literally look at what is happening on Instagram right now to girls as young as like 14. Because the fact that you are so passionate about the ban of TikTok, when we consider the other evidence that we've talked about today, like the government's ability to control social media platforms and what news is being shared and talked about, it really begs the question, is it really about the kids? As for the date thing, the CEO mentioned this in his opening statement. While the vast majority of people on TikTok are over 18, one of, and one of our fastest growing demographics are people over 35. We spent a lot of time adopting measures to protect teenagers. 
Many of those measures are firsts for the social media industry. It is interesting to know that children or teenagers are actually not the largest demographic on TikTok. And what's more, he continues to explain that they have taken measures to attempt to protect teenagers and some measures that are a first of their kind in the social media world. And this includes the fact that it's not possible to private message anyone under 16. <laughs> Instagram doesn't have this. The CEO also mentioned some educational content that is now viewed a bunch of million times. And while that is cool to no, I think we all know on a real level that no teenager is using TikTok for education. They might be learning things that are interesting along the way, much like we all are, but they're not using TikTok to learn math or English, let's be real. He does address the security concerns along with the ByteDance stuff. Let me start by addressing a few misconceptions about ByteDance, of which we are a subsidiary. ByteDance is not owned or controlled by the Chinese government. It's a private company. ByteDance has five board members. Three of them are American. TikTok itself is not available in mainland China. Also, TikTok not even in China? Of course, something to consider is that the concern is not with the Chinese population getting access somehow to data or personal information. It is, of course, with the government. So really, that point doesn't matter, but it is interesting. As for the security thing, for real though. Now, that's what we've been doing for the last two years, building what amounts to a firewall that seals off protected US user data from unauthorized foreign access. The bottom line is this, American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. We call this initiative Project Texas. I'm so sorry, but it's really hilarious that it's called Project Texas and I can't explain why I find that so funny. Like, what's the most American thing we could call it? What's a not sus American word, Texas? But I think that that's really about as much as TikTok can do to try and ease those concerns, right? The security thing, in my opinion, is basically answered right there. And what's more, as we mentioned earlier, data and the selling of personal information from the internet is not a difficult thing for the government to get their hands on. If anything, it would be easier for China to just buy this stuff if that was the goal here. TikTok will remain a place for free expression and will not be manipulated by any government. And should the theories surrounding the true reasons as to why the American government is worried about this app be accurate, they will not love that promise to say the least. Since the hearing, which was essentially like five hours of grilling the TikTok of CEO, seemingly lawmakers have not been persuaded. We do not trust TikTok will ever embrace American values. Values for freedom, human rights, and innovation. TikTok has repeatedly chosen the path for more control, more surveillance, and more manipulation. Your platform should be banned. Even though it seems that this decision is being left in the hands of people who don't even understand how Wi-Fi works. And as for a final resolution on this, we at the Hot Tea team will update you as more develops and we will do our best to spill the legal tea on this situation. And for now, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's legal tea spill, don't forget to subscribe to the Hot Tea channel, leave this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. And for now, here is some my bleach. And with that, I yield back.